Hi everyone and welcome to our corporate Q&A session today. I'm Gabrielle, Business Development Manager here at Forbes and I'm joined by Pauline Rigby who is a partner and head of our corporate department. Pauline also sees all of our other commercial departments here at Forbes and maintains key client relations for them all too. We're going to start today um, by looking at the corporate market at the minute and how it's doing. Do you want to touch on that first Pauline? Yeah, of course, that's fine. Hi, Gab, by the way. Um, so where are we up to? Um, 12 weeks into lockdown. Um, how are we faring in the corporate market in Lancashire? Um, I'd like to say um, that I think will be um, a positive for people to hear that the last couple of weeks have actually um, been really positive. We've seen some real positive signs in the market. Um, we were quite lucky here at Forbes in that a number of our deals were within the manufacturing and engineering sector and also digital as well at the time um, when lockdown happened. So those deals luckily continued. Um, we obviously had a number of deals that were bank backed or management buyouts or in the retail and hospitality sector. So unfortunately those deals did take a back seat and um, we were asked to pause on those transactions which obviously is unfortunate for all the parties concerned but over the last couple of weeks on most of those deals not certainly not all of them but most of those deals especially the ones in the retail sector and those that were bank backed etc we've been asked um, to pick up those deals again and start moving with them albeit a bit more slowly um, but those are obviously positive signs unfortunately for those clients of ours in the leisure um, hospitality sector um, those deals um, are still parked for now um, but I'm really hopeful that again um, in the next hopefully three to six months that uh, those deals may may come back on the table probably in a different guise and maybe structured slightly differently um, but fingers crossed they, they will come back to some degree. Do you think that clients are starting to feel more positive now and where do you think things are going to go from here? Yeah, so um, I would say at first um, when um, Boris announced that the, we were going into lockdown, there was a lot of confusion and that first couple of weeks for our clients, um, it was just manic in terms of asking questions, obviously mainly geared towards our employment team in terms of what this meant for them, what it meant for the staff, the furlough scheme, um, whether or not they should be open, whether they should be closed, were they key workers? Um, and it was just a complete mass of confusion. So that first couple of weeks, um, us and I have no doubt a lot of lawyers out there and accountants were on hand to advise clients throughout that difficult, confusing period. Um, like I say then, for, specifically today talking about corporate, from a corporate perspective then, the market, um, it just felt very strange. It gone from a really busy period um, to obviously just a period of, of consolidation. Everybody, directors, boards, you just, your focus is completely on getting through the pandemic and protecting their staff and protecting their colleagues, which, um, protecting their customers, etc. which is obviously right. So um, that's what happened. And then this phrase, the new norm, I think everyone then settled into this new norm, this new way of working. Um, and people have got their mojo back, I think. Um, people have decided that, well, you know, you, you've got a business, you can't just stop. So um, people's mojo have come back, people are trying to fight for work, people are trying to do lots more business development, social media, a bit like us here on um, on YouTube, etc. And again, I think that has then inspired people into thinking, well, those deals that we did have on the table, um, let's bring them back now, because it just feels this more, this element of positivity. And you know what it's like, positivity breeds positivity. So I think that because some businesses are feeling positive they're shouting about it and that ultimately then means that others feel positive so um i'd certainly say for lancashire but i think lancashire people are a lot more positive um anyway so um i certainly feel that in lancashire now the next the last couple of weeks have been really good and hopefully um we'll just continue to go from there how are deals being undertaken now um with everyone working remotely are you seeing virtual deal teams Oh gosh, yeah. So virtual deal teams. Um, I think one of um one of my team members, Jenny Burke, said today she's zoomed out 
Um, every day you're on different Zoom conferences, um, like we are now, Microsoft Teams. Um, it's just a complete new way of working and um, seeing clients remotely. Um, last week I did a due diligence exercise with a client that you would normally go onto their premises, sit with them, talk through um, all of their business, all of their contracts. Um, get a real feel for the business um, and now we have to do that obviously via Zoom. Very different way of working. Um, it's working, um, there's no doubt about it, it is working and um, people are adapting to it. Um, I feel like I'm a little bit old school in that I like to actually um, be with people, see the whites of people's eyes, read body language um, and I feel like you can only really gain a proper connection um, by actually attending on, on people. Um, but look, it's, it's working and I do think that the future, as everybody keeps saying, will now um, always have some element of, of, of virtual um, means to it. So I think deals will continue on this basis, negotiations, there's no need for round tables with the other side now, why would you do that? Yeah, I think you would in the future hopefully attend on your clients again um, but I think in terms of the other side say the lawyers are in London etc why would you get the train down to London to go for a round table meeting when you can do it via Zoom and Microsoft Teams um, so um, there's, even on Microsoft Teams there's lots of work sharing going on so you can see contracts you can be talking to people and they can actually visually see it um, obviously there's data rooms but that's obviously been used for some time so yeah, there's an electronic signatures and things. I mean, for me, like I say, it will be a shame. Um, it, there are less um, actual um, physical meetings. But I do think that this has shown that you can do a deal and you can do it probably a lot quicker um, by using virtual means. Yeah, definitely. So we've touched on the corporate market generally, but specifically in Lancashire, how has it been? Where do you think it's going to go? Have you noticed some of your clients changing what we do and how they work during this time? Yeah, so we've noticed a lot of change from so many of our clients now working in, in completely different ways. Um, some amazing things that some of our clients have done, completely innovated, um, gone into new markets, um, expanded into new territory, um, have got involved um, in the whole COVID-19 battle. Um, and they've been um, manufacturing products for chess, et cetera. So, um, yeah, we've seen lots of change from lots of our clients. Um, in terms of the Lancashire M&A market itself, again, I think as Lancashire people, we do like to be positive, lots of resilience there. I think it will come back. I think we will have a busy late autumn winter. Why do I think that? Um, I think that because there are a lot of clients out there that will be, um, or buyers out there, sorry, that will be opportunistic here. So I think if they've got good cash reserves or the ability um, to get um, quite a bit of borrowing, they will see this as an opportunity. Um, and those um, businesses that have struggled or um, maybe want to go and, and do something completely different, they may sell an arm of their business or, um, or again, they may just think uh, that was enough for me, I've had enough, I want to do something completely different. So I think there will be these opportunic, opportunistic um, buyers out there. I'm fearful for those sellers that may just want to sell because they're panic stricken. Um, and they may just think, I've had enough. Um, I'm going to sell now because ultimately I don't want to go through any of that, any of that again. Now, what concerns me with that is they may not actually get the true value for the business, but all the efforts that they put in over the years. And there could be other ways that they could restructure and their business obtain funding in other ways. So then in, that will then in turn and end up with them seeing the real value of their business in due course. Oh, how else do I think it will change? I think there'll be a lot of due diligence carried out by buyers in respect to this period. So I think buyers will really look into how sellers actually handled themselves in this process. Um, how they innovated, how how their governance worked, as in who made the decisions, were they flexible enough, did they cope well with it? So I think there'll be lots of questions from buyers surrounding and scrutinising how um, the company has performed. And also, obviously, there'll be a lot of scrutiny and questions asked in respect of um, what grants they obtained, how they, how they worked the furlough scheme, etc. So, yeah, in turn, I do think there will be 
there will be some differences um, from here on in. Um, and a lot of questions asked about how they coped in this period, a lot of scrutiny about what they've done. And then also, I think if a seller um, is looking to sell on a deferred consideration basis, then again, something like this will make you a bit more aware of getting security to back that deferred consideration. So I think there'll be a little bit more sellers being aware of actually trying to get as much cash up front on the day, because obviously any buyer we've seen in this, any business can enter into financial difficulty as a result of a global pandemic, um, which obviously um, no one envisaged. Definitely not. So finally, we've got a number of acquisitive clients. Has mm -hmm. this made them put their plans on hold um, or are they continuing to still look at buying further businesses? So a number of our acquisitive clients, um, one of which in the retail sector, um, one of which in manufacturing. So manufacturing, that certainly didn't um, stop them, though that continued. Um, there's been some, um, again, some um, communication about some opportunistic type deals that they're looking at already, um, but they've got good cash reserves to be able to, um, to start looking at deals. They've seen areas in which they want to expand, so they're already looking at those businesses that could provide them with that further expan expansion. The retail acquisitive clients that did stop absolutely altogether just put on hold um, because obviously those shops closed um, but now as we know with retail reopening next week um, those deals are already um, back on so we've been instructed in respect of a number of deals and asked to push them along now and get, actually get them completed really quickly um, so yeah they, they're back on now thankfully but at the time yeah they were certainly put on hold but I think for those acquisitive clients who do have good cash reserves, this, um, this will be a good time for them to, uh, to start to increase their M&A activity. Definitely an interesting time at the minute, isn't it? Absolutely, it certainly is. Oh, well, thank you, Pauline. We will be posting this video on our website, social media and our YouTube channel. We've also now got a podcast channel too, so you can find it on there. If you've got any other questions or need support with anything, in, in terms of corporate law, Pauline's contact details will be posted alongside it. But thank you, and that's all for today. Thanks, Gab.